welcome back to another Stitches and Scribbles video. Today I'm going to be finishing the men's cardigan that I started last month. I showed you at the end of the part one of this video, but I have already finished the vest portion. I don't know if you can see that. I can't scoop back anymore because I um, have the bed right behind me so I can't get further away from my tripod with where it's set up. But I'm going to be to words. Wow. I'm going to be continuing the sweater today. Um, again, I will have it linked below just like I did in the last video, but I'm using a cardigan pattern from Heart Hook Home called the Cozy Coed. I'm looking at it now. Cozy Coed Crochet Men's Cardigan. Mm -hmm. um, so far, this has been a really easy pattern to work on if you're looking for an easy beginner sweater. Um, I also would consider it unisex too. I like it's not. Um, you could definitely make this sweater for anybody, even though it's labeled as a men's cardigan. I also really like that it has a variety of sizes, including a long version for each size, and there's a really wide range of sizes available, which is super nice. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get started. The next step that I have in the pattern is to do the ribbing that goes around the front and the collar, and I believe that means that we're also going to be making buttonholes. So. I'm going to get to crocheting. Um, while I'm working today, I am listening to a podcast at the moment, but I'm probably going to switch to continuing my audiobook. I'm currently listening to the Southern Book Club's Guide to Vampire Slaying because I wanted a spooky book for October. And I've also got a lovely cup of tea next to me. So I'm going to get going and show you what I'm doing along the way. again it's day two of working on the second part of this project I didn't get as much done yesterday as I hoped I ha was having one of those weird days and you'll have to let me know if anybody else feels this but like if it gets too warm overnight and I wake up feeling like sweaty and gross and too hot it like throws off my entire day which is what happened yesterday so the whole day I felt kind of groggy and had a headache and all this stuff so I'm really glad it cooled down overnight last night because today I'm feeling refreshed and ready to work on stuff. Um, yesterday I did finish the collar and the trim. You can see the shawl style collar with the fold over there. One thing I did notice about the pattern that I wasn't anticipating is that it doesn't actually have buttonholes. I think that because there's some looseness in the stitches you're just supposed to feed the buttons through the whole the gaps in the stitches instead of having a traditional buttonhole which makes this a really good pattern for a beginner crocheter or somebody who's not used to like sizing and placing buttonholes which is nice um but I'm definitely gonna have to send my mother-in-law text the sweaters for my father-in-law if you didn't watch part one or forgot um, and ask if that's something that he would still be okay with because I know that that's kind of odd to not have buttonholes and still use traditional buttons. Otherwise I'm going to look for those um, like loop and bar closures that are kind of like um, the corded loop around like a bar shaped button so that you just loop the button piece through the loop. That was a really long explanation <laughs> to say that um, because then it wouldn't 
rely on buttonholes because the other end of the clasp is the buttonhole. Um, so I'll have to ask her that, which probably means that we won't get to see buttons go on this project while I'm working on it for the video, but I'll like maybe post a picture on Instagram with whatever I decide um, to put on there. So today we're going to be working on the sleeves. Um, and I think today while I'm working, I'm going to continue the <laughs> spooky movie marathon that I have started this morning. I started re-watching Monster House because they put it on Netflix. And I remember watching it when it came out as a kid or not too long after it came out. Um, and so far I'm <laughs> really enjoying watching it as an adult, but wow, there's a lot of adult jokes in this movie that would go over your head as a kid. So I'd say if you're thinking about watching it with your family, um, if you have kids fifth grade and up, they are probably going to get some of the um, not so kid friendly jokes that are in there. Um, but if you've got kids younger than that, it's totally fine. It's not super scary. I'd put it on the same level as like Halloween Town or um, I'm trying to think of another like sort of scary movie. I don't think it's any scarier than like the scariest scene in most like Disney cartoon movies. Also the animation is really old which I remember it looking really cool when it came out kind of like Toy Story type animation where now with the progress we've made in the animation field um, it looks really old and really dated which for me watching as an adult viewer makes everything like less realistic but a kid might not notice but so far it's funny. I decided I had to watch it because I read somewhere that it's based off of a town in Wisconsin. Um, there's no like actual evidence of that in the movie other than just like you can tell it somewhere where it's like definitely cooler fall weather for Halloween. Um, but I thought that that was fun to watch something that is supposed to take place in Wisconsin because that's where I live now. So I'll probably keep watching it. I've got like 30 minutes left of the movie and I'm thinking after that I might watch Night Books, which is a new like family friendly Halloween movie that's on Netflix. So I'm going to get started on those sleeves and keep going with the spooky movie marathon for today.
got one sleeve done. It took a lot longer than I thought it would to finish one sleeve. I worked on that sleeve for about three and a half, four hours. I finished watching um, both Monster House and Night Books. Um, Night Books was definitely very interesting. There's a lot of blending of fairy tales going on there. Um, but I don't want to give too much of it away because it'll spoil parts of the movie. But very good. I would say if you are watching it with kids it's definitely scarier than Monster House. Um, I would put it as like slightly scarier than Hocus Pocus if you've seen that one. There's definitely a lot more um, scary fantasy elements to it um, and the witch can be very scary at moments but highly recommended. It was really good. Um, probably like a middle school like fifth grade to eighth grade interest level movie but I enjoyed it as an adult as well so that was kind of cool. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and start the other sleeve. I'm hoping that maybe I can get this done today if not maybe tomorrow um, and I'm gonna keep listening to my audiobook because I'm almost done with the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. I've got about 30 minutes left on it so I'm gonna try to finish it and then I don't know maybe watch another movie or something we'll see. <laughs> This is the finished cardigan. You can see I do still have to weave in my ends, but I'm really impressed with how it turned out. This is a great pattern if you hate sewing panels together because most of the panels you just build off of the previous one. I also really like how the ribbing on the sleeves and at the edges of the cardigan turned out. Again, there's no actual buttonholes, so I think you're just supposed to like feed the buttons through those little gaps that the ribbon creates but yeah that's it if you liked what you watched today make sure that you subscribe and I'll have links to all of my other um, social media and stuff down below as well as the pattern thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one bye